Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiser Guys Ireland. Let us continue on from where we last left off. So, we have secured Ireland's independence. We will be no dogs to the British, to the Germans. We will join the Germans, but you know, as, as a, almost like a little brother, as opposed to like some sort of dog that's, we're not even like a good dog. We're not even like, like a husky or something. We're like, you know, we're like a little shih tzu or something, like some stupid little dog. Anyways, if you have a if you have a Shih Tzu, I apologize for the uh, the slander that I'm <laughs> bestowing upon your dog. Anyway, workplace practices. Our, exper our experiment with workplace practices based on those of Union of Britain have yielded results, both good and bad. Though our overall production has seen a noticeable boost, the workforce has grown fond of the practices and has turned to syndicalist groups in hopes of maintaining them. God, damn. 189 political power. When did this when did this happen? Oh, it's because of you. Right. I knew, I knew, I knew that. Loyalist anger will decrease. Consumer goods go by 5%, but that's fine. Um, provide affordable housing. Congratulations to everyone. You now get to have a house. Inheritors of the Republic. Among the countries that make up Europe, Ireland stands out as one of the few whose nationhood is by and large married to republicanism. Before the English invasion, the island was, like most of the continent, a monarchical society, and its early rebellions too were also of those of monarchist nature. While the Republic was mooted for the first time in 1627 as a compromise between rival contenders to the Irish throne, it would take until 1791 for the idea to truly rise to the prominence as Theobald Wolfe Tone, inspired by the French Revolution, formed the, union, the Society of United Irishmen with the aim of establishing an Irish uh, Republic to remove the British crown. Though supported by the French due to unfortunate circumstances, the uprising of the United Irishmen in 1798 and 1803 would end in failure. But the revolutionary's vision would resonate with the heart of the Irish people, inspiring them for years to come. Through the darkness of the bleak uh, 19th century, the young Irelanders and the Fenians would carry on the torch of republicanism handed down to them, rising up in 1848 and 1867 respectively. Most significantly of all, however, were the Irish Republican Brotherhood, a secret society which was key in organizing the faithful Easter Rising, which ignited the spirit of Irish liberty once again and, although proposals for uh, crowning a German prince were thrown around, Ultimately, Republican aspirations passed from generation to generation would emerge triumphant as the Republican, Irish Republican Army fought its war of independence to drive out the British. While Labour's connection to the struggle for freedom is more tenuous than those of other parties, among their founders were uh, nonetheless the 1916 martyrs James Connolly and their commitment to uh, popular sovereignty and the rights of the men of no property, as Tone put it, are as serious as any. Having helped draft the democratic program of 1919, they now intend to uh, finally fulfill its social and economic promises. Okay, modified government. What do we have? What do we have? 194 political powers. Pretty good. We can almost get two people as well. Stability and negative 10% consumer goods. We could go political advisor. I mean, you're not actually that useful, right? Hey, you're actually not really that useful ever, to be honest with you. Multi population. More monthly population. No, or just a flattening. You know what? No, no, no. We're going to go with William Norton. Interventionalist economist. Boom. More stability. Negative 10 uh, consumer goods. What are we at right now then for consumer goods? 12% 12, 12 is pretty nice. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now, if only we had... Um... Now, now, if only we actually had an economy that could make use of it. That would also be nice. But we don't. Yeah, so it's 79, five further levels. I think we're just fucked. So I don't think we can, because, yeah, this is, um. Still suffering from Vaxxel Black Monday, has full control of Leicester. I mean, I'm going to take it. But I don't think it's actually going to do anything for us, unfortunately. I think I maybe have, uh, screwed this up a, a little bit. That's fine. Portable housing will be done in just a few days. Liberia has joined the International. Not really my concern. I don't care what Liberia does. It's Liberia. And like, I mean, all of these fronts are like a little stale. King of Spain actually is making a bit of a comeback. I'm very surprised by that. Like, I mean, good for you. I'm just a little surprised. Wait, we're still holding Burgos. Bilbao is still around as well. Again, I don't care if the Carlist or the King of Spain wins. As long as the CNT loses, like, that's obviously our ultimate goal. I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be nice if it did. 
The Gaelic Athletics Association. The GAA, founded in 1884 during the so-called Gaelic Revival to protect and promote traditional Irish sports. In achieving this goal, the GAA succeeded remarkably. Whereas before the uh, advent of the GAA, the Gaelic games, football, hurling, handball, and rounders were largely moribund. Uh, come Irish independence, the GAA affiliated clubs could be found in every Irish parish. Uh, though its influence was more strongly felt in rural areas, come independence, football meant the Gaelic sort to nearly any Irishman. The GAA continues to organize and govern those sports, both at home and abroad. And GAA clubs and events often draw massive crowds of spectators. Unsurprisingly, for an organization dedicated to cultural revivalism in the sphere, uh, the political sphere, the GAA was and is strongly associated with the Irish nationalism. Notably, the group counted prominent Fenians and home rulers among its founding members, and first patrons and uh, local GAA clubs were nearly uh, early nexuses for recruitment for the Irish Republican Brotherhood. It was a massacre uh, perpetrated by Crown forces on civilian spectators at the Gaelic football match in the GAA's flagship Cork Park Stadium. Bloody Sunday, that would uh, become a potent symbol of British tyranny during the War of Independence. The GAA was uh, briefly granted authority over Irish uh, athletics generally until the foundation of the NACA in the mid-1922. At the time, Ireland uh, had recently signed the uh, Anglo-Irish Treaty with the United Kingdom and supported the GAA by uh, the newly independent Ireland was understood to uh, potentially undermine unity in sport. That uh, bifurcation remained in place even after the end of British rule in, northern, in the north, and has uh, continued to do until the present. Though the Gaelic Games, and thus GAA, received substantial patronage from the government of Dublin, uh, in the interest of maintaining social harmony and present governance of the Republic, it seems certain to continue to uphold that state of affairs. So I appreciate the political power. Yeah, like you're not. Oh, so these are 85 days? I thought they were um, 80. Oh, they're 100 days. Oh, okay, then we were fucked from the beginning. We were not one day off. We were like 21 days off. Still think we could have avoided it. Like, we're still going to be hit with this um, Black Monday penalty because I am bad. Actually, I want to take the fuel refining one. The whole reason we even got that fuel storage tech was to get that fuel refining technology as well. So how many days of oil do we have? Like, we're not even capped out yet. Which is crazy to me. The 12th of July, 1938. That's tomorrow. On the 12th of July, 1690, or the 1st of July of the Julian cal calendar during the William Annette War, was the Battle of the Bowen was fought in Oldbridge, County Meath, which saw the armies of William of Orange emerge victorious over the forces of the Catholic King James II. Although the conflict between the Jacobites and the Williamites in Ireland would continue for a year afterwards, ending with the Battle Buddy of uh, Ongrim, the defeat of the Bowen would cause James II to flee to the Isles, uh, flee the island of France. He would never return, for which he was branded Seamus al Khalid, or James the Shit, by his Irish supporters. And for a loyalist, this day became remembered as the most significant victory, marking their deliverance from the fears of the Catholic domination, and for a time, their sentence to absolute power in Ireland. And is commemorated yearly with bonfires and marches in celebration. As this year anniversary rolled around, concerns that uh, more violence was in uh, the offing, as uh, had uh, happened exactly one year prior, quickly propped up. Uh, potentially worse than before due to the hectic uh, events of the Ulster Crisis. Fortunately, however, owing to promises of constitutional reform, along with the restoration of the Northern Garde and the security measures put in place, in spite of some small-scale violence, the possibility of any large-scale rioting was averted, uh, despite the efforts of the Blue Shirts and the UVF to stir up conflict, rendering this year's 12th of July a relatively peaceful one. So we still lose 5% uh, stability. Very cool, very cool. Thank you, Protestants. I could have used that stability. Why don't you go back to what, 300 years? Give me back my goddamn stability. I could use it. Anyway, so what are you? You are less loyalist anger. Replace building a democratic program with a burgeoning welfare reform. Sounds good to me. And I'm happy to not have to take the... Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. More political power to gain. 15% support for our party as well. Like, that's going to be, like, really good for our party popularity. Defend party. Okay, that, that's, um, not what we are interested in at all. But anyway, we're 54% um, world tension at the moment, which is, which is quite high. I'm not going to deny that. We're going to throw one more factory in the rifles right now. How many factories do we have in total? Eight? What can we buy? Can we buy any guns? Yes, from Austria. Let's see if we can do 
Five deliveries of rifles from the Austrians. Excellent, excellent. Are you at war? No, they've already annexed Hungary. Are you doing, um... I don't know which, which side they've done. I don't know if they're going to do pluralism or end the dual rule. Hopefully pluralism. I mean, they've given Galicia, Lodimiria, and Lyria some, uh, some territory. Which, but they haven't released Transylvania. So I'm, I'm honestly not too sure. I guess maybe they haven't, like, taken the focus yet. I think that's also a possibility. Okay, we can support this push here. Looking good. Something about the Clover Revolution. Is that for us? Probably not. If there was something that was happening, we would have gotten an actual event. The diplomatic crisis has broken out between the two. The Union of Britain, the countries are withdrawing their ambassadors. Linda for wait, 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 wait. Is this, does this involve us somehow? Date. It is August. British ambassador crisis. Germany deployed syndicalist. Russia expels German ambassador. I'm guessing this is Britain and France getting in a spat about us. That would be my guess. Because neither of them were able to gain influence. We can't do this quite yet because the world tension is not high enough. And we're still dealing with Black Monday, unfortunately. I think we, we, we're probably just going to be stuck with Black Monday. We're going to hit the negative 5%. But then we are going to be getting our... Uh, plus 15 from this. So that's fine. The PSA is actually taking Chicago. The Pacific States is, do is doing incredible. Latvia joined the uh, Moscow Accord. We'll probably see Romania, Serbia, and Greece join them soon as well. Estonia's joined up. Very, very rude, I would say. Okay. The death of Kuchkalin. Of all the figures of Irish mythology, none as well known as the famed champion Volster, Kukuthin. Born uh, with the name Satana, uh, he gained his more famous moniker, heading the Hound of Kolan. Uh, as the uh, kid, uh, after killing in self-defense, the guard dog of the smith Kolan, offering to take the dog's place out of obligation. I'm going to read this over again, because I have no idea what the hell they just said. Of all the figures of Irish mythology, none is as well known as the famed champion Ulster, Kukulan. Born with the name Setanta. He gained his more famous moniker, meaning the Hound of Colin, as a child, after killing in self-defense the guard dog of the Smith Colan, offering to take the dog's place out of obligation. Okay. Trained in the heart of combat in Scotland, he soon became Ulster's strongest warrior, most famously defending the kingdom against the empires of Queen Mabeth and Connacht in the uh, mythological epic uh, Tambo Colinch. As well, uh, regard bronze statue designed by Oliver Shepard, a sculptor who competed in art competitions between 1924 and 1928 Olympics, depicts Kuhalin's ultimate death in battle, having tied himself to a stone. According to some tellings, uh, with his own intestines, to die on his feet, leaving his phones unaware that his demise for three days until a raven perched on his shoulder. Although the Protestant uh, born in the uh, county of Caron, Shepard is nonetheless an Irish nationalist, who in his own words stated that my politics are simple. I have always thought that this country should be a free country. And his own connection to the struggle for independence, having been a teacher of William Pierce, uh, brother of the well-renowned Pradang Pierce. Uh, with the sculpture remaining unsold in Shepard's studio despite the admiration for it, the government has made a move to purchase it. But it is a divide to where to place it. Shepard considered moving the statue to the General Post Office in Dublin, birthplace of the Easter Rising, as a way to symbolize the courage of the Irish and reinvigorate patriotism as tensions mount in Europe. However, loyalists have uh, tried to claim the mythological hero as their own on account to his defense of Ulster from the other provinces of Ireland. And uh, while many are skeptical of this, it has been uh, su uh, suggested that uh, locating it in Belfast City Hall could serve as a means of bringing local sectarian divide by emphasizing the people's common uh, provincial identity as Ulstermen. Uh, what are they at right now? Negative 18, negative 0.3. But 0 0.02, okay, that's basically zero, so... So we're going to go a little bit more stability off of this. We've established the welfare state. Congratulations to all Irishmen. Um, cheaper trucks for 180 days is kind of like nothing. Civilian factories here. Expand factories. Um, let's expand the Cork Ford complex. Where is um Black Monday? It's going to be done in 17 days. Yeah, that's not... It's not good, I will say. Well, that's, you know, <laughs> but 
We'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what the penalty is. I hope it's not too, too bad. So we're at five. So I think we need like three more of these. When aborted, we get our political power and manpower back. We'll get manpower back regardless. But uh, yeah. We have not, we, we did not finish the recovery for Black Monday. Unless, is this going to like reset? Like it's just a penalty and then it... The Endless Stagnation. Cool. It seems that after time and time again of unrequited promises by the government, it's finally solved the economic crisis once and for all. The Irish people have completely given up hope that the nation will ever truly recover from Black Monday. No matter how much of the blame is shifted to the uh, failings of external factors of which the government cannot easily control, such as foreign banks, disruptive supply lines, or run companies, it seems clear the finger will permanently be pointed towards O'Brien and his government. Cool. Okay, well, 90 days no matter what the, uh, the Black Monday ends, so... So it is... It'll be removed on the 4th of December. Cool. That's my fault. I, I will... I'm willing to take, uh, take, you know, account for my actions. Should not have happened this way. Resource market minus 10%. Another negative 15. I mean, we don't need another negative 15. I don't think, at least. Um, Lazo, fair capitalist. Agrarian expert. Bank president. Are they, like, who's good here? Cheaper aircraft actually is interesting, but we don't really have the economy again to really make use of that. Where's do we have like another stability guy somewhere? I don't think I don't know if we really do. We actually we have yeah, five percent stability, five percent uh, political power gain, negative ten percent resource to market. I'm happy with that for now. We'll go for the thirty nine rifle. I know this is 1941. Ignore that. It was a typo on the document. It will resolve that in post. We'll build ourselves two radar stations. Yeah, I think this seems... This seems to make sense. I'm, I'm happy with where this is at. Today, Leinster House has been brimming with the sounds of much backslapping and relieved congratulations. To the fine work of the Department of Foreign Affairs, Ireland's access to a vital source of energy has been secured. As this fuel is not found naturally in Ireland, it can only be uh, obtained by uh, importing it from countries much closer to the equator. And so it's important was this resource that many uh, wondered how so many industrial sectors have managed, to, uh, managed without it in the past, given how reliant they are on it now, the rich dark liquid it produced. Tea. The only good thing the British ever gave us, um, as has been uh, murmured about the people of love for the beverage. Such as its popularity that per capita, Ireland demands now outstrips its neighbors. It was introduced by an old British ruling class well over 100 years ago. Its usage is diffused among the rest of the population in time. Traditionally, the British have a gainer supply of uh, the leaf from the colonies of the Indian subcontinent. Uh, with the Union now obtaining, similar, now obtaining similarly from their own Indian allies. While access to the source for ourselves seems steady for now, cautious whispers determine that it would be unwise to solely rely on it, should the trade be disrupted in the future. As such, a small group of Irish diplomats have been uh, sent to the uh, last few months, traveling around the world, visiting plantations and negotiating import importation deals, uh, finally determining that mixing some Indian Assam tea with a darker, stronger tea available in German-held Kenya will produce an excellent, robust brew, suitable for the domestic market. By decreasing the country lines on potentially an unreliable, solely Indian source and diversifying its blends use, the result has been uh, both a better tasting tea and a more secure access of imports for the years to come. Well, thanks for the stability. Thanks for the extra political pa uh, party popularity. We did just lose a lot of it by fucking up the, the, the economy. <laughs> okay, civil war in Greece. And Greece, uh, did they go monarchist? No, I think they're liberal. Which, I, I, what's the, what are you, what are you? Memories of the game. Yeah, they've, they've gone uh, Republican. Republican Greece typically will align themselves with Russia. So we have no real interest in dealing with any of that, uh, any of that nonsense. And so we simply just will not deal with that nonsense. More civilian factories we used. One civilian factory after two months is not a bad deal. And I would like to join the Reichs back when we can. Of course, I don't want to join the Entente because it's again it's the Entente. They're, just, they're just like never really worth it. Like maybe if they had the Pacific States on side, we could see something good come from that because. Um, you know, America, it's a pretty powerful nation. It'd be nice to have, but... 
can't really 100% rely on that. So we have, this is going to be our, this is our second shipment right now. Guns, trucks, it's really just rifles, huh? Monarchy restored in Greece! Well, now that is interesting, actually. Now that is interesting. Now we actually might have, uh... Now you might actually be interested. I'm actually gonna recall... Actually, what about here? I'm gonna recall our volunteer. From Carl to Spain. I'm gonna send a division over to Greece. Because, again, the king of Greece, I'm pretty sure, is pro-entente. And that is what I am uh, looking for. Because pro entente means not anti-Berlin, which means not anti-Dublin. You know, you gotta, you gotta think of things in the, in the real politic situation. You can't just be like, oh, they joined the Entente. Who cares? If they're anti-Paris, we're happy. Not anti-Moscow, but it's, that's less of importance uh, for me personally. But I will say that at least... King of Spain took back Madrid? Holy, King of Spain's going off. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up. If you're not enjoyed, click thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe, and goodbye.